Praise God. What a glorious day. Today we honor the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. Today we honor the fact that he completed his mission so far. And he's ready to come back soon. As we get ready for him to come back soon, we must take and receive all that he's done for us. And all he expects us to do with what he's already done for us. The title of this message is The Great Exchange from Death to Eternal Life. You are worthy, Lord, to reign. And he's reigning, but it also says he is sitting at the Father's right hand, waiting for his enemies be made his footstool. By you. That's why he's taking up his holy throne deep within our hearts. As he takes up his holy throne deep within our hearts, we, the body of Christ on earth, we reign through Christ Jesus. Are you reigning? Are you reigning the way Christ expects you to reign using his power? Okay. We overcome the enemy. Actually, all we have to do is enforce the defeat of the enemy. Satan's already been defeated. Now, we know just because the country is defeated doesn't mean the challenges stop. The peace has to be enforced. You and I need to enforce that peace by taking our God-given dominion. We enforce peace through the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Contrary to belief, the Bible is believed to be the true word of God as well as history book by many science. The Bible proves itself correct even when the surface does not appear to be so. Each of these scientists either publicly acknowledged the creator or opposed evolutionary thinking, or in many cases did both. These scientists found their faith in God's word to be perfectly compatible with their scientific investigations. In some cases, their faith sustained them through times of physical hardship or professional difficulties. Samuel Morse, the American who invented the telegraph and the Morse code, endured many frustrating years during which his ideas were rejected. Although he was penniless and frequently hungry, Morse never stopped trusting God because he believed that God's guiding hand was in his life. The influence of their faith on the development of science was more direct, proving a framework of thinking which helped lead them to their discoveries. In other cases, the influence of their faith on the development of science was more direct, proving a framework of thinking which helped lead them to their discoveries. For example, astronomers who charted the paths of planets across the sky but could not make sense of the complicated paths they saw. Many scientists gave us searching for a simple logical pattern, after all they reasoned, had the universe emerged from chaos anyway. In contrast, the German astronomer Johannes Kepler reasoned that since the uni universe was designed by an intelligent creator, it should function according to some logical pattern. Tim, the idea of a chaotic universe was inconsistent with God's wisdom, Kepler's Christian faith led him to a way of thinking which eventually enabled him to solve the riddle of planetary motion. By the way, I was reading a while back that 90 plus percent of astrophysicists, the ones who study the stars and things, believe in God. But they can't look at that and not come to the realization that there's some God that created it. And you look at where Moses tells about the formation of the earth in Genesis. It's all lined up scientifically right in things he could not have possibly known 4,000 years ago. Every time they try to prove the Bible wrong, I love it. Because they can't do that. To many scientists who believe in our Creator, there are at least 21 famous scientists, name a few more, Louis Pasteur, the Wright brothers, Isaac Newton. Many people thought the description of the Pool of Bethesda recorded in the book of the Gospel of John 5, 1 to 15 was a fallacy. However, in 2005, a classical architectural entrance to the Pool of Bethesda, described by the Apostle John, was excavated exactly as John had written in detail. Science is always proving the Bible right. There are many more archaeological findings that verify biblical stories as being true. Too many to discuss today. Now, so 
talk about the resurrection. It was prophesied 700 years before Christ. Jesus predicted his own resurrection. The bare head handkerchief napkin of Jesus was neatly folded. The body of Jesus was gone from the tomb and he was risen is recorded in four Gospels. The sun was darkened, the temple veil was torn in two, the earth quaked, and the rocks were split. Now the darkened sun has actually been proven scientifically. Why was it important that God tore the temple veil in two? This miracle meant that the temple was open to all, to everyone who could now communicate with our Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ. The veil barred all but the high priest from the presence of God. When it was torn into at the death of Jesus Nazareth, access to God was made available to all who come through him, as noted in Mark 15, 38. All means us. We can go directly to God. We don't have a veil between us now. This demonstrated God really wanted to part the veil to have fellowship with you and me. His mighty dunamis resurrection power so great that it was demonstrated in a manner that nobody on earth could dispute that it was an act of God because of the death of his son, Jesus our Redeemer, the sacrificial lamb who made the way back to the Father for each of us. Matthew 27, 52 to 53. Graves were opened and the dead were resurrected after Jesus was resurrected. The dead who resurrected after Jesus resurrected actually walked into Jerusalem to visit their loved ones. What a shock that must have been to their relatives. Now what's interesting, a lot of these things we're talking about today is recorded not only in biblical, but in secular records. It's been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt if anyone would look at the records. In fact, there's more evidence proving that Jesus rose from the dead than that Jesus, than Julius Caesar was emperor of Rome. But they deny it. Why? Because of the devil. Matthew 27, 50-54, and Luke, the centurion exclaimed, Truly, this was the Son of God. There's no record of anyone ever surviving a Roman crucifixion. Romans were very good at what they did. They were talented. And they put fear into everybody through this. Crucifixions were public, so people could see what would happen to them if they came against the mighty power of Rome. Okay. After the resurrection, the apostles developed new courage. The apostles were tortured and executed because they would not recant nor deny the story that Jesus had risen from the dead. I spoke with this a little bit on Friday. There was a big mafia high person in, I think, the Colombo crime family that because they didn't recant he believed in Jesus because he told he knew from the things he had done in his crime business he could make people recant he could make them change their stories he could do anything to them but when it's this true and they hold on that truth he knew it was the truth we must believe the truth right now everything in the gospel everything in the Bible is true unequivocally there's no part of that Bible that is false in any way, shape, or form. We must stand firm believing that. We talk often about the challenging times coming. We often mention that things are going to get bad. And people kind of say, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. listen to me. We're going to need this deutimous dynamite power of Christ inside of us to get ready for these challenging times. Because when they come, it's going to be too late to prepare. The time to prepare is now. Okay. Part B. The resurrection of Jesus gave you victory over death. The miraculous resurrection power raised Jesus from the dead, proved his deity as the Son of God, who has victorious power over death. Acts 1, 1 to 3. Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles to whom he had chosen, who may also present himself alive after his suffering and many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days, and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. 2 Corinthians 5.17 and Acts 1.8, You are a new creature in Christ, have received the Holy Spirit's dunamis power. Now this is what we have. 
You've heard a lot of stories about Jesus raised from the dead. I get that. That's fine. We're going to talk about what he's given us when he raised from the dead. He's given us his deutimus power. The meaning of deutimus is not referring to just one stick of dynamite, but more like stick of dynamite that explodes to ignite a million more. Strong's Concordance, G1411, dynamite, deutimus, force, special miraculous power, ability, abundance, meaning, mighty miracles, power, strength, violence, mighty wonderful work, an army, a host, the strength, ability, power, universal, inherent, natural power, power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature, which a person or thing exerts or puts forth. This is the power that Jesus has given you when he went to the, rose from the dead. His dunamis power is inside of you. Why? Because we have the Holy Spirit. Okay. Believers have been crucified with Christ. Operate only in the Spirit's dunamis power. Paul uses the word dunamis, which means dynamite. He speaks regard to the resurrection. When he says the power of the resurrection, he's talking about the explosive, world-changing power because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In addition, the word that is in the Greek is translated as power refers to an inherent natural, not a derived, improved power. Jesus Christ has an inherent natural power that breaks all boundaries, all powers, destroys all restrictions, and this deutimous dynamite power of the resurrection is inside of us as born-again believers as we are in Jesus Christ. What we'll do by decreeing these scriptures and prayers over ourselves today at a higher level, activating the deutimous, miraculous resurrection power inside each of us that we've never attained before. Now, Pastor Karen has prophesied this is turnaround time. This is turnaround time. This church, the people in this church have been beaten down too long. It's time for us to take our authority and use the dunamis dynamite power of God that the Holy Spirit put inside of us to take control, to take dominion. The first mandate, take dominion over, take dominion over our lives, take dominion over physical challenges, take dominion over finances. It is time that we stand forth using the power given to us. Why would you have a power and not use it? That's like saying, hey, I've got a nail gun, but I'd rather go hammer nails one at a time. Why? Why not use the full power that you have to do the work of the Lord to bless yourself and the people around you? I want you to think about that for a second. The dunamis dynamite power of God is inside of you. Okay. He who raised Christ and the devil also quicken, give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Miriam Webster's definition of quicken says in the K, uh, King James Version means to revive. John 14, 12. I want you to think about this. Jesus wants you to do greater works. He said, greater works for you do than I. He wants us to do more than him, greater things than him. My Bible says that if they record all the miracles Jesus do, did, they couldn't hold them in all the libraries of the world. We need to step up the plate. It's time. We've been studying, we've been learning. That's fantastic. Okay, like the bamboo shoot that's been building its foundation. And then once it finally breaks through, it takes five years to build the foundation of a bamboo. When it finally breaks through, in five weeks it grows 90 feet. It's time for us to grow our 90 feet in five weeks. It's time. We've been working on it. We've been feeding the Word. We've been studying the Word for years now. It's inside of us. We know we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. We have the power of Jesus inside of us. Time to go. John G. Lake operated in the Deutimus Miraculous power, Resurrection Power as his daily lifestyle, taught his ministry assistant to do the same. He said, walking in faith means that all sickness and all evil are repelled. That's how neither of them got the black plague when thousands were dying around them. They actually carried the dead bodies out of their home to bury them without the uses of PPE. Okay. Back in those days, the plague was the horrific thing. It was so deadly. When they told John G. Lake he had to uh, be protected. He says, take some of that plague and put it on my hand. 
Now look at it. The plague died when it touched him. I don't care what the enemy puts out there against you. There is nothing that can touch us if we have the dunamis dynamite power of God inside of us and have the faith to believe to use it. Now, virus has died in his presence. You don't have to run away from contagious diseases. They run away from you when you operate in the dunamis dynamite resurrection power of God that's already inside of you. John G. Lake said that fear is the opposite of faith. They learn not to walk in fear because they're not afraid of anything because nothing of the enemy could harm them. Fulfill the great commission for the dunamis, miraculous power inside of you. Mark 16, 14 to 20. Believe, be baptized, be saved. Signs will follow you. Cast out demons, speak in new tongues, take up serpents, drink anything deadly. It will by no means hurt you. Lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Lord will confirm the word through accompanying signs. Mark 16, 14. Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table. He rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, they drink anything deadly and by no means hurt them. They will hands on the sick and they will recover. This is our mission. Our faith to do this. To go out and take dominion over all these channels we just mentioned here. As we do this, the kingdom of God grows. And that's why we do this. Somebody who's in healed, somebody has a lot of faith. When they have major breakthroughs, their faith grows. They start to believe. So then the Lord had spoken to them. He received up to heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. They went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. The word power or might is used frequently as dunamis, which means dynamite. It's found 118 times in the New Testament. I want to clarify one thing here. Dunamis and dynamite are the same thing. But that's because the person who made dynamite was looking for the right word to name his stick. Dunamis is a gazillion times more powerful than the biggest nuclear bomb we have on the world today. It pales. Dynamite pales in comparison to what dunamis is. And all this power is inside of us. And we need to go out and start using it. We need to start exercising our faith. In other words, the New Testament applied to Jesus Christ, grabbing his power and authority, dominion, lordship, freedom of action, strength, and rule. And these descriptions are the dunamis, miraculous, resurrection power of God in us. What Mark 16, 14 to 20 is describing that we should do more frequently and regularly. Now let's go out and demonstrate that sphere of influence around us. I am looking forward to the testimonies we're going to hear. God is doing something very special today. He is sending out anointed everybody here. Your faith is growing today. Your faith is encouraged today. And you're going to start having testimonies. And those testimonies are going to spur on more faith. And that faith is going to spur on more testimonies. And more testimonies are going to come forth. And this cycle is going to grow and grow into a revival that's going to go across the nation and around the world. It is time for us who believe to stand up and take our authority in Christ, heal the sick, cast out the demons. Now do it appropriately as we teach here at ABC. But it's time to show the world that the strength of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit in us flows through us. You know, I said this morning in prayer, it's kind of came out of my mouth. We're no longer the Gideons down in the threshing well. We're now the Gideons taking the sword of the Spirit to the world. We may be small in stature and number, but our ability to conquer with the Word of God is unquestionable and more importantly, unlimited. And it's our time. And I say this to encourage you. 
and let yourself be the example. Because going forward from today, we're expecting new changes. We're expecting turnarounds. And I'm expecting people to come and say, how are you doing that? And you're going to talk about Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and you're going to lead them here to ABC so we can teach them more and get them more involved. We have all the schools online. We're ready to roll. 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might be righteousness of God in him. This is the great exchange. For God took the sinless Christ, poured into him our sins. Then in exchange, he poured God's goodness into us. That's a pretty good trade. I do that trade all the time. Be born again believer. You are made to be the great exchange. Like a chicken who became the eagle. There's a story. An eagle laid an egg. And for some reason, this egg didn't stay in the nest. It rolled down the hill and ended up in the chicken coop. And the hen sat on the egg, and it cracked open, and this little eaglet popped out. And this eaglet grew and grew and grew. He looked like an eagle, but he acted like a chicken. That's what we saw around him. So one day, another chicken eagle was flying around, saw so this eagle down here. Flew around, what are you doing down here? You're an eagle. And the little eagle said, no, I'm a chicken. And the eagle said, no, you're an eagle. Watch. And the eagle took off and flew and flew over the fence and everything. The little eaglet tried and tried and tried and banged into the fence and fell down. Went back back on the ground. Because that eagle couldn't see the power he had inside of himself. He saw the power of the chickens around him. But he wasn't. He was an eagle. And as soon as he would realize he was an eagle, he could fly like the other eagle. We have to free ourselves to fly like the eagles. We're supposed to do more than Jesus Christ. Quit looking at ourselves in the mirror. Look and see ourselves as God sees you. Righteousness. Definition. Innocent, holy, just, righteous. The state of him who ought to be righteous. The condition acceptable to God. The doctrine concerning the way in which man may attain. A state approved of God. Integrity, virtue, punity of life. Righteousness, corrected. Rightness, correctness of thinking, feeling. And acting in a narrow sense, just for the virtue which gives each of us his due. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, we should be condemned to die. But Jesus paid that price by dying for you and me and took our penalty. The way you repay Jesus for doing that for us is to use what he gave you to advance the kingdom of God. Martin Luther quoted that to describe his thoughts on the great exchange. The Lord Jesus art my righteousness, but I am thy sin. Thou hast taken upon thyself what is mine and hast given to me what is thine. Thou hast taken upon myself what thou wast not and hast given to me what I was not. If I have sinned, my Christ, in whom I believe, has not sinned, all mine is his, and all his is mine, as is written. My beloved is mine, and I am his. This is what Paul says. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Victory over sin and death, as he says, the sting of death is sin, the strength of sin is the law. Jesus went to the cross. Jesus exchanged his life for your death. Jesus exchanged so many things. Let's talk about that. John 3.16 God exchanged and gave us his only begotten son, Jesus. We believers receive an everlasting eternal life. 2 Corinthians 5.21 God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us as the exchange. We received the righteousness of God in him. Galatians 2.20 Jesus who loved us and gave himself for us as the exchange. We've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer we who live, but Christ lives in us. And the life which we now live in the flesh, 
we live by faith in the Son of God is what we receive. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Jesus exchanged his death. He died. So we could receive the promise that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth of confession is made unto salvation. 1 Peter 2.24 Jesus bore himself Jesus himself who bore our sins in his own body on a tree by the stripes of Jesus as the exchange. That we having died to sins might live for righteousness and we were healed is what we received. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. Though Jesus was rich, he became poor for our sakes as the exchange. Through his poverty, we become rich is what we received. 2 Timothy 1, 7. God didn't give us the spirit of fear was the exchange. We receive power, love, and a sound mind. I'd like to extrapolate that a little bit. Power. Acts 1 8. God's dunamis, dynamite, resurrection power. We receive that. 1 John 4 18. Love. Perfect love casts out all fear. 2 Corinthians 2 16, the Amplified Classic. Sound mind of Christ means there's no emotional or mental health challenges, no anxiety, no stressfulness, not being overwhelmed. My goal is to encourage you. My goal is to encourage you that now is the time. Now here at ABC through Apostle Joshua, we've had great teachings Fantastic schools. Everything we need to do to prepare for what's coming. And as we take these teachings and we implement them and we develop them and to get the deutimous dynamite power of God inside of us working the way it's supposed to, there is no stopping any of us because Satan has been defeated. How can you be stopped if you have no enemy? He's been defeated. We stand on the word. He's been defeated. We stand on the word. The word is true. He's been defeated. And if he's been defeated, that means you are victorious. The only person that stops you being victorious is yourself. By not taking your victory. By not running the race. By quitting. We are the victorious ones, and we are the ones here to start showing the world how to have victory after victory after victory going forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the word of the Lord to Annie is actually just like my sermon for Resurrection Sunday. Last Resurrection Sunday, 4 9 20, 23, Annie called Pastora Karen and I prior to going to church service. She had no idea what my sermon was going to be about on the Resurrection Sunday, April 4th. She said she received a word from God that was so profound she wanted to share it with us right away. I asked, Were you speaking in tongues? And what was your interpretation? Annie replied, Yes, singing in tongues during my hour of power. She woke up at 5 30 and did a mini scenario worship and said her affirmations of Acts 22, 14 to 15. And the first Corinthians 2, 16, expanded mind of Christ's prayer. We taught her while singing in tongues. Now, Pastor Karen and I have been training her to hear the voice of God more clearly. And he continued to say she was seeking an answer. What was this sore throat challenge was? And Jesus basically told her to let the glory of God in her eradicate it. She believed the Lord wanted to share it with the whole church. Pastor Karen said that's cool because Acts 22, 14 to 15 was operating. You heard Jesus speaking and the Heavenly Father speaking. These are distinct voices different than the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's voice is gentle and true. Jesus has a royal tone of voice yet like a good shepherd. 
The Heavenly Father's voice is very authoritative and loving. Pastor Karen, I got up at 3.30 a.m. and the Holy Spirit told her the same thing that Annie got too. She praised God that Annie was operating what Pastor Karen and I have been teaching Annie to affirm those specific scriptures to learn to hear the voice of God more clearly. Here are those specific scriptures and I will ask you to affirm and repeat after me that we minister to people often. Let's affirm them now. Okay. One of our main goals, if you're hearing from the voice of of God. You will never be beaten. You will always be correct. You will avoid every challenge or get through every challenge because he will lead you and guide you. Okay? So the name of Jesus, read after me please. In the name of Jesus, In the name of Jesus. according to Acts 22, according to Acts 22 verses, 14 and 15, verses 14 and 15, I praise you, I praise you. Lord, that you are the God of my forefathers. And you have destined and appointed me to know your will, to perceive, to recognize more strongly and clearly, and to become better and more intimately acquainted with your will. And to see you Jesus Christ, my Messiah, Jesus Christ, my Messiah the, righteous one, the righteous one, and to hear a voice, and to hear a voice from, your mouth, from your own mouth, and a message, and a message from, your lips, from your own lips, every day, every day continually. continually. And in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I, am witness, I am your witness unto all people, unto all people of, everything of everything that I see, that I see and hear. That you, Holy Spirit, that you, Holy Spirit teach, me. teach me. Amen. Amen. And expand at 1 Corinthians 2.16 affirmation. Repeat after me, please. In the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus according to 1 Corinthians 2.16, 2, I, I have the mind of Christ. I can focus perfectly. I have perfect memory. I have perfect memory. Recall. Recall. My mind, My mind. Brain and body. Functions perfectly. And I make perfect decisions because I hear the voice of my God clearly from my Heavenly Father, Jesus my Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit my guide. Now Annie also heard Jesus speaking to her while praying. He said this to her. Okay, I have risen. Sin, sickness, and death were left in the grave. For the enemy is defeated. You have a defeated foe. The same spirit that raised me from the dead now dwells in you. You don't have to reach up to receive anything. To receive healing. Reach within. Let the glory in you flow out of you. And align your five parts. The glory in you. That dunamis, miraculous, resurrection power kills every germ, every disease every virus, every parasite, every pathogen. The dunamis miraculous resurrection power in you neutralizes every allergen and toxin. The dunamis miraculous resurrection power in you allows every part of your cell, organ, subsystems to function at optimal level. You don't need external remedies. All you need is me. All you need is to know who you are and the power that is inside of you. Then God the Heavenly Father spoke to Annie and said, For I am the God of the universe, my glory cannot be measured. And yet, when raising my son from the grave, I exerted my energy in strenuous, vigorous action and effort. I rose my son from the grave. I didn't raise sickness, sin, and death with him. It remained buried. Then when you accepted me into your heart, when you accepted my son into your heart, I gave you that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. I give you my spirit. My spirit has overcome. You are an overcomer in every area of your life. Now rise in these ending days as overcomers. For this is how you will prevail in the ending days. Know the power that is in you and walk in that power. I love you, my children. I, Lord, have spoken. God is telling all of us, inside of us, we have nothing to fear. 
Let's go forward now and take dominion. If you'd like to affirm this word and you receive from the Lord over your own life, since God intends to be a message for the body of Christ, please repeat it after me. This prayer affirms you are actually operating in the great exchange and choose to receive all the blessings and promises that Jesus gave you when he paid for your sins to redeem you from sin, sickness, poverty, and death, and gave you redemption, healing, health, and prosperity, and eternal, everlasting life. Dunamis Dynamite Resurrection Power Prayer. Please repeat after me. Heavenly Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, you, Lord Jesus, have risen. Sin, risen. Sin, sickness, and death we're left in the grave, in the grave. For, the for the enemy is defeated I have a defeated foe, a defeated foe. The, same the same spirit that raised you Jesus, that raised you, Jesus from, the dead, from the dead now dwells in me, dwells in me. I, don't I don't have to reach up to receive healing, to receive healing. In, Jesus name, in Jesus name I reach, in, reach, within, I reach within and let the glory of God in me, me. flow out of me, me. aligning all of my five parts. parts. In the name of Jesus, the the glory in me, me. that dunamis miraculous resurrection power, miraculous resurrection power, power. kills every germ, germ. every disease, every Every virus, virus. Every every bad bacteria, Every parasite, every, parasite. Every, pathogen. every pathogen, and every biofilm, and every biofilm. which is a slim, slimy film of bacteria. In the name of Jesus, In the, name of Jesus. The, dunamis, the dunamis, miraculous resurrection power, miraculous in, power. Resurrection in me, in neutralizes, neutralizes every allergen, every allergen. and every toxin. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The dunamis miraculous resurrection power. Dunamis miraculous dunamis resurrection, resurrection power in me. In me. Allows, every part allows every part of my cells, of my cells organs, organs, and subsystems, and subsystems to, function to function at optimal level. At optimal level. I don't need, I don't need external need. remedies. All I need need is you, Jesus. Jesus. All I need need is to know know who I am am and the power power that is inside of me. me. For you, Heavenly Father, Father, are the God of the universe. universe. Your glory glory cannot be measured. measured. And yet when raising your Son, son, Jesus from the grave, you exerted your energy, you exerted your energy in strenuous, in strenuous vigorous, vigorous action and effort. Action and effort. You, God, you, God, rose your son, rose your son from, the grave. from the grave. You didn't raise sickness, you didn't raise sickness. Sin, sin, and death, and death. With, him. with him. It remained buried. It remained buried. Then, when I accepted you, then when I accepted you into my heart, when I accepted Jesus, when I accepted Jesus your, son, your Son, into my heart, into my heart you gave me, you gave me that, same spirit, that same Spirit that raised Jesus, that raised Jesus from, the dead. from the dead. You gave me your Spirit. You gave me your, spirit. your Spirit has overcome. Your spirit has overcome. I, am an I am an overcomer in every area of my life. In the name of Jesus, I rise. In these ending days, in these ending days as, an overcomer, as an overcomer, for this is how, this is how I, will prevail I will prevail in these ending days. In the name of Jesus, through the power of your Holy Spirit, the power of your Holy Spirit I, know I know the power that is in me and walk in that power in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of I decree for all of us that the Holy Spirit reveals to us a greater understanding to operate in the dunamis, miraculous, resurrection power 
on a daily basis as our new lifestyle in the glory of God. So in conclusion, you have the same power of Jesus in you. You are unstoppable. You can overcome every challenge with God because Jesus has risen. Okay, let's do communion now. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord Jesus. 1 Corinthians 11.24 says that when Jesus had given thanks, he broke the bread and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father in, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, I thank you that every time we partake of Holy Communion. We become one with God's divine nature. We honor the Lord's Supper as a lasting memorial. Each time we receive Communion of the Body of Christ. Because it is not a symbol. So we do this in remembrance of the atoning sacrifice Jesus paid for our spiritual freedom because he died as the true sacrificial lamb at the cross and was buried for all mankind. The body of Jesus was broken for us to heal, restore, renew, and rejuvenate every cell in our body. That is because his body becomes one with us as we take communion. We thank God that Jesus, our Redeemer, Lord, Savior, and King, is the only one who ever rose from the dead and set us free. We now take your body, and in doing so, we agree and receive that we have been healed by the stripes of Jesus from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Receive now in Jesus' name. We also don't repeat after this part. We also pray according to First Corinthians eleven twenty five in the same manner he took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you do, drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till you come. Now repeat after me, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord for, this for this precious gift of the Holy Communion, of the Holy Communion cup, of cup of blessing as we partake of your blood and of the new and everlasting covenant. For this is the covenant that we have made with you for eternal salvation. We partake of your blood in remembrance of our blood covenant of redemption, of redemption and remission of sins, and remission of sins because, our sins because our sins have been washed away, have been washed away by, the blood of Jesus. by the precious blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we take this cup of blessing and we agree and we receive because of the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit who dwells in me, quickens my mortal body, and restores it to the life of God. We thank you, Lord, that the blood of Jesus has redeemed us from death, so we will live and never die, but live and remain with our Heavenly Father, 
Jesus, Jesus. And, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Now drink the blood. Okay. Now, let's do our 20 affirmations of 1 Peter 2.24. We've been healed by the stripes of Jesus. Everybody ready? We have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. We have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. We have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. We have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. We have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. We have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. We have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. Been healed by the stripes of Jesus. We have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. We have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. We have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. We have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. We have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. We have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. We have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. We have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. We have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. We have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. We have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. Last one. We have been healed by the stripes of Jesus.